Right, all right, all right. Welcome back, everybody. We got ourselves a balance test, a custom game between Scarlet in the top left side of the map and Team Liquid's climb in the bottom right. Shopify Rebellion versus Team Liquid. Rather incestuous teams that have uh, stolen each other's players over the years, back and forth, and sponsored each other and that sort of thing. But uh, I'm most excited about this because it's, it's on the new balance map. And I've been told that almost every new unit and change from TVZ is witnessed in this game. And that is exciting for me. Uh, obviously, we've been talking so much about the Cyclones the last few days, and uh, they did recently change it again. So now it's gone, you know, it got more hit points, then it got slightly less hit points. Its damage went up, its damage went a little down. Uh, damage versus armor, you know, basically it's changed a few times. I'll try to talk about all the changes as we come across them. But more importantly, the other changes have just been going under the radar because the Cyclone's been so visible and so there's this big visual change to this unit it's being massed and running around and clems butchering people in, in in the balance tournament with it but there's a lot of changes there's so many changes i'm going to try and mention them and talk about them all as we go through the course of this hopefully give you guys some thoughts on them as well as we go but a lot of them are more subtle you don't see with a hydra list change necessarily oh there's 50 hydras winning every single game straight away you don't see with the banelings losing five hit points and losing a little bit of that damage that allowed them to like one shot probes and drones you don't see that immediately oh these banelings, you know, aren't killing as much. We're not seeing it as much as we like. It takes more time, whereas the, the Cyclones is much more visual. So keep in mind, guys, Infestors have changed. Hydras have changed. Lurkers have changed. Broodlords have changed. Ultras are a little bit cheaper and burrow faster as well. I hope we get to see that one. Um, ghosts do less snipe damage. The EMP is a little bit smaller radius, but Fungal has also got shorter cast range. Uh, Cyclones are completely different. Uh, the Raven doesn't start with Interference Matrix, you have to upgrade it now, like there is so much to talk about and I can't wait to see exactly how it goes because we need more testing and we need more games. There's so much theorizing, like, this is broken, this is stupid, but you know what? There's so few people actually testing the game. Much much like in, in real life, guys, a lot of people shouting about things they don't like happening and very few people doing anything about it. So I need more pro games, but also more community members out there playing games. Uh, you know, we put up a video yesterday um, of a Reddit thread where a player played against someone way better than them and was beating them with a new cycle and said, hey, this is kind of worrying. This, this is my buddy who always beats me and he's a thousand MMI and now I'm beating him. So I just, I feel like this sort of stuff is really cool to um, to look at. Even, even from low level players, we need you guys to play games and, and really share replays with specific examples. Don't just tell us because I, as someone who's been coaching StarCraft for many years, um, there is a massive difference between <laughs> the way people describe what happens in a game and what's actually happened in a game of StarCraft. I know this because even Masters players sometimes ask me for advice and I, I look at the replay and I'm like, this is not what you described to me as the problem at all. And that's just it. It's a complicated game. It's hard to understand everything that's going on. But uh, let's talk about the build orders because Clem's just doing his standard Reaper Harass. Scarlet's gone for a very standard third base. She just left one more from Gas. He has gone for a low ground wall off into a command center, into a second factory. And he's already going two Hellions with the Reaper straight into a few Cyclones. Now, luckily, this map has some pillars on it. Hopefully, yeah, she's going to hide on that pillar. This one's hiding on this pillar. And without a Starport, he won't have a way of spotting those units. Otherwise, he could pick off the Overlord. So she's got to be really careful. And look, yeah, she knows about it. They, they've probably played a bunch of custom games. She puts an Overlord on this pillar as well. She realized she can't be leaving Overlords out in the open because those Cyclones hit the field so fast. And Scarlet has seen the wall off. So she's looking pretty darn good here. I, I, I'm already thinking about questions that are going to pop up in the comments that I can maybe answer before the cast gets too deep. Pig, so who, who, who wins? Terran or Zerg? Like, who won out on this patch? Who got the better end of the stick? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> EMP's a little worse. Snipe being nerfed makes a really big difference. On the other hand, the Baneling hit point nerf is probably one of those huge ones. The Hydra got a crazy buff, but that's been toned down a lot. That's been toned down. The upgrades are split back into two upgrades, though they've had their time reduced on them and their cost just a little bit. So the Hydra is back closer to what it was before the patch was first announced than what it is now. Uh oh, watch out, those Cyclones. Notice how the Cyclones kick the crap out of Queens, guys. They can outrange them and just kite in and out. So Scarlet's got to threaten a bit of a Ling backstab. Oh, she gets caught. She gets caught. Uh oh, this is not looking great. She's only on 38 workers, guys, and she needs to respect this. Remember, a laser in this scenario was going tons of drones, 50 drones, and then getting overwhelmed by the Cyclone Alien. Scarlet's realizing, okay, I need to keep looking for a backstab with my Zerglings while trying to get this Rotorin up. Her Rotorin is finally up now, but these Lings and Queens aren't going to hang on for much longer. A few more Cyclones join in, and it's going to be trouble. So, oh, Lings go for a backstab. Not enough Zerglings. If she had about 20 Lings there, easy surround, easy kill on those two pre-speed Cyclones. 
With speed kicking in in 30 seconds, she's in trouble right now. The queens are still getting damaged. Luckily, the overlord is giving her good vision. These overlords are really helping her be in the right position at the right time. Her ling's going across the map. I wonder if she brings them in for a flank, or does she try to cut off the reinforcements again? First few roaches are out. She's making a ravager. She's making two more gases, and she's trying to drone up that third, so she's keeping it at least even on workers. And remember, Clem delayed his third command center a lot to put this much pressure on. So this actually seems to be playing out okay. Remember, these cyclones have 110 hit points, guys. They do 11 damage versus light. Uh, versus regular units, 13 versus... Oh, versus mechanical. I thought that was meant to be versus armored. Oh, they've made it versus mechanical. Oh, so they don't get bonus damage versus Zerg at all. Oh my god, I didn't even... I literally... It just dawned on me that was the new Cyclone change. I thought it was versus armored, but it's actually... They've changed it to versus mechanical. So that straight up nerfs it versus Zerg while still getting bonus damage versus... All the Protoss armored units are also mechanical units. Stalkers, Immortals, that sort of thing. And this Ling run by caught a few Cyclones... But most importantly, it bought her a bit of time. She's lost a lot of Zergans for free, but she's pulled him home. She's got Roaches up, Lair on the way, Evo Chamber, a few more gases, and she's trying to drone up and move out to a fourth base with this drone. So she's doing A-OK. -okay. This is really cool, guys. I, I, I can't believe I've, I've made such a dumb mistake um, talking about that. I think yesterday I mentioned the new changes, and I'm sure the comment section was already filled with that. I say yesterday. I'm talking about in terms of when these go out. I'm actually recording this like an hour after doing that other video. So <laughs> it's just, I try to talk to you guys in terms of the, the timing of when you're seeing the videos so that it's not confusing. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be funny. I'll, I'll try to make a note to edit that or something like that. Edit some text on the screen pointing out how dumb I am. Uh, Roach Ravager, ooh, there we go. Cyclones taking some damage from the Biles. The Biles can help zone a little bit. That is pretty nice. Um, she's still got a few lings up there. She's got plus one range on the way. He's gonna go blue flame now as well. Clem is going just two reactors, one tech lab. He's really leaning into these cyclones. And I mean, they can outrange these units and they still smash versus those roaches with a 13 mechanical damage. Don't get me wrong. Because they attack twice a second. 26 damage a second versus a roach that does 16 damage every one and a half seconds. It's, it's a bit of a difference. Oh! He gets an overlord, but he loses another cyclone. He's got to be careful with these trades. Oh, Hellions try to run in, but there's no drones there yet. And he reveals his hand. She is not going to fall for that. Plus one carapace is on the way as well as plus one range. Her lair is done. Roach bead's on the way. Scarlet needs to choose her next tech choice. Is she going to go quick lurker viper? Is she going to try and get out some infestors? Swap it back into Ling Bane? Just mass roach ravager? I don't think a big roach ravager all in is very good against the cyclones. But if you get enough units out, you could flank him. And remember, if you flank this army with a big pack of roach ravager, you can sandwich it just the way you could with the old cyclone. This is a hit and run unit. It is a kiting unit that is wanting to kind of just pick and, uh, pick and poke and prod at you. Okay, so he's going to pull back for now. Fourth command zone is on the way. He's going to put his barracks. He lifts that out and says, hey, just use that to wall off the front because it's a nice tanky structure. Good move. Hellions run in. They get three drones, but for four Hellions, not too bad for Scarlet. Uh-oh, she's out of position though. She pulled her whole army. No, she sent her Ravages back to the left. Just got to be careful. Ravages are kind of soft, remember. They don't take bonus damage from the Cyclones at least, but she does lose one of them. Uh-oh, she's got to be careful. Okay, those Biles do keep him back for now. Takes out a few of those units. Loses a Ravager. Not too bad. Units lost time. Is actually in Scarlet's favor quite heavily right now. And she's on 86 workers. This giant squid shadow is the greatest thing ever, I swear. This thing on this map, I'm like, what is that? It freaks me out every time I see it, man. I'm like, oh my god, what is this giant zerg swimming above us in this ocean? If I zoom out, I wonder if I can see it. Oh, those roaches coming in, the cyclones. Okay, a couple cyclones do go down. That's it, though. Two or three cyclones for, like, 15 roaches. Units lost tab back in favor now of... Uh, or of Clem, just by a little bit, so a bit wasteful for Scarlet. He's got very late upgrades, 1-1, one, one, and he's got now two tech labs, three reactors, and he's going to build an engineering bay in case he needs turrets. Cyclone's going to dive! He sees she's out of position. She doesn't have that many units here, and that's the power of the Cyclone. Caught you out of position. Lol, killed a whole ton of units. Those queens luckily getting out. Oh, these tanks are kind of shoving into a very risky scenario, but she's not quite ready. Oh no, throwing away those roaches may have just thrown this game away, but she does pile down the tanks. At least she does that much, but she's lost so many units. Okay, the infestors come out with fungal now, remember, and they do 25 damage now, guys. Remember, fungal got nerfed to 20 from 30. It was at 30 damage. Pre-patch got put, proposed to be 20. They put it back to 25, but it has one less cast range than it used to have. Keep that in mind. Uh, roaches are the exact same unit. She's going tunneling claws and burrow as well. Burrow is great for the infestors to ambush. She's got 100 drones and a fifth base on the way. Clem, though, he's got a fourth base with a planetary going up. He's building three more factories. I imagine they'll all be tech labs to build more tanks and Thors and that sort of thing. I think he has enough space for them to move out on the left side of those factories. 
but wouldn't be the first time a pro-terran walled his own tanks in. The Hellion's gonna kill a couple of drones, not too bad. A couple of Hellions for a few drones, but definitely not an amazing trade, and oh my lord. Here come the Shark Sharks. Here come the Shark Sharks. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Clem, 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 clem. There's a big... If he looks there, he can see this big black trail of dirt getting kicked up as those roaches go through. Oh my god. Okay, Roach is going to start to unburrow. She's poking the front at the same time. She biles a tank that's out there. Roaches will unburrow in this main base. There we go. Very nice. The Roaches in the natural. She's a little slow to burrow those, but on the front, she burrows to break the lock-ons. Takes out one or two of the cyclones. She's doing a very good job there. And she's coming forward. If she can catch those with a fungal, that would be amazing. Um, roaches are in the main base getting cleaned up right now. She just burrows a single one. Sensor Tower will get taken out. Fungal could be game-changing right now. Watch out, watch out, Clem. Oh, but she's a little slow on setting that up. Not the smoothest setup for Scarlet. She's a bit busy macroing, going for Hive, plus two, two upgrades behind it. She's going to swap back into Banelings now. You do need those against usually like uh, Ghosts and um, Hellbats later on. But for now, it's not going to be a big difference. Keep in mind, Hellbats are not as good versus Zerglings anymore. They took away the ability to one-shot Zerglings at plus three attack in the uh, recent changes as well. I don't know if that was in the original. I feel like that was only added in the most recent uh changes uh, oh my god okay okay oh oh clem tries to get that infester but a single cyclone doesn't do nearly as much damage as it used to so not able to mass tank cyclone here you'd think mass zergling would do well but i just don't know if zerglings are actually that good up against the cyclones they're obviously great versus tanks i haven't really seen i think they can get the cyclones but you're gonna need a big surround and it's kind of dangerous to go mass link because a few Hellions, of course, ruins Zerglings. Adrenal Gans, Baneling Nest, plus one melee, plus two Carapace, and Aspire on the way for Scarlet. Oh my god, she burrows the roaches on top, land some big fungals. Amazing ambush. I don't know if that burrow was on purpose though or not. A little bit of a derpy burrow in the middle of the fight and uh, maybe didn't quite work out for her. These roaches still trying to harass though. She's still trying to do some very cool ambushes. I love that she, with the infestors, she's so uh, motivated to make burrow. And then says, well, if I've opened Roaches versus Mech anyway, I might as well use the Tunneling Claws. So it's kind of funny how these unintended consequences where it's like, hey, wait a second. Infestors, Burrow is great with those. Oh, I might as well make Tunneling Claws. And suddenly Tunneling Claws Roaches might be a bigger part of the matchup. Uh, likewise, there might be Ravens coming in. Oh, Bios on the decks are going to be big. Oh, not as big as I thought. Scarlet ends up taking a pretty bad trade. And she only took out like one tank with those Corrosive Bios. These roaches are still waiting there. There's a Zergling up there, but that's a five base Terran. She's on one, two, three, four, five with a six base trying to come up. She did get up to 100 drones a lot earlier than him, but feels like these last fights have been kind of wasteful. On the other hand, she's done so much harassment damage. The unit's lost time overall is still very, very even. She's going to go Neural Parasite. Plus three ranges on the way. The adrenal Gland's almost finished. Is she going to go straight Greatest Buyer or is she going to get upgrades, I wonder? Roaches in the bottom will get cleaned up by those tanks. And Scarlet, she does finally borrow those and tries to get out of there. Trying to preserve those units to fight a little bit later. And hey, she baits us again, gets both Roaches out. Very nice. Roaches trying to come down to the south. This is a very scary tank push. You can see the Hellbats are now in the mix as well. So Zerglings are not going to be useful. This is probably why she never went into those Zerglings, because she knew at any moment, you've got Mass Reactor Factory. You can just rally Hellbats in and ruin my day. Oh, but more Roach Harass. This is something which Clem has not built turrets at every base. She's going to just try and hold position behind the uh, minerals and the gas so that she doesn't fight in range of the planetary. The Ibix cannon has not got its uh, high-sec auto-tracking just yet. So the Roach is going to burrow around, try to move around as those cyclones do respond. Looks like no scans available at this exact moment. No turret on the natural out front here or here just yet. That's very surprising. This turret's in the mineral line. But, okay, he raises the diva. He sees it. He sees the dirt trail. Oh, she jumps on him. She jumps on him, though. She caught a bunch of his tanks on the retreat. The other tanks do siege. There, I think there was four or five tanks there that just went down, guys. Uh, you can bring up the tank count. Yeah, she's killed 11 tanks this game. Great fungal. Great fungal catch as well. She says, yeah, yeah, hit and run tactics. How about get stuck? Um, and those cyclones do get stuck by the infester. Greatest buyer is now finished. She's got a fifth base coming back up. Or sixth base, sorry, with gases on it. This base up here mining... I do feel like Clem's income is probably better than hers, or at least very similar right now. And that's not great as a Zerg player. Those roaches knock that supply efficient the longer we go in this game. And Thors are already coming out. So if she's thinking about Broodlords, I don't think they're going to do that well, well versus these Thors. The Roach Ravager coming forward. This is a really cool mech versus Cyclone game. She kind of stumbles into his army here. Oh, she does bile down to her the tanks, but not a great fight for Scarlet. Those roaches and the Ravagers actually kind of going to get... Are they going to get one more tank? No way. She gets one more tank on the south side. Clem's army, a little bit derpy there. Does leave one tank and one Hellion in the middle. Gets a Ravager on the way out. Broodlords 
on the way right now. So she's going to go eight Broodlords. The Thors will destroy those. Remember, none of these units have changed in terms of Thors and Vikings. They're, they're still going to be good. Advanced Ballistics is on the way as well right now. Um, but she has got four Infestors. If she can get more Infestors and then maybe some Vipers with Blinding Cloud to deal with the Thors, that could be big. When Run by comes in, is going to get rid of a lot of those uh, SCVs mining times. We'll pick a few of them off. She borrows a few in the mineral lane for later. Broodlord's coming forward. Oh, this is a weird fight, though. The Vikings are going to take care of those Broodlords. She's trying to get what she can out of them very quickly. Remember, the Broodling, uh, Broodlord has been massively nerfed in terms of its Broodling is so much slower. Look at how slow those Broodlings move, guys. They used to scramble across the battlefield so quickly. They're now very, very slow. And they attack slower. And they have less hit points as well. They're down from 30 to 20 hit points. So broodlings are nowhere near as good as they used to be the brood lords are more mobile but we didn't get to see that in that fight because she was just attacking into an army where there was viking thor ready for it. an amazing fight for clem he's now up five six thousand resources in that unit's lost tab and uh what, what, what's being rebuilt he's making plus three weapons she's making plus one air oh new parasite from behind very nice very nice oh she accidentally blew some banelings up on those doors which is not ideal but it's something she's gonna have to pull back from this chase though bit of a messy fight she does bail down the front siege tank, but she's got to get out of there. And indeed she does. Widowmine on the right side is still there. Clem's still pushing. She needs to unburrow these Zerglings. Could be effective right now. There's nothing guarding it. Clem is somehow maintaining an 84 SCV economy. And that's too big against a Road Ravager Infestor army. Five more Infestors are on the way right now. So we're really getting to see a ton of the new Infestor. We've seen the Broodlords not look that great in a head-to-head -head fight. To be fair, it was a bad situation. She had nothing to deal with the Vikings. Ideally, she would have brought her queens over, but she's only got three queens in this game, which is not right. She's already lost all her queens earlier. So normally you'd bring queens to deal with the Vikings. Um, and maybe you'd neuroparasite those Thors if they're so exposed, right? The Broodlords are meant to go fight siege tanks and other units on their own. So we saw the Broodlords look bad, but it was in the situation that they're not meant to be good in, right? Um, even pre-patch, and they're even worse in now. Zergling's still trying to get run by his... What else is going on here, guys? It feels like Clem's just denying the bases. I think Scarlet might be out of steam at this point. She's got a bit of bank left, but I don't think she's found enough efficiency, and it's getting worse for her. And look at that. He's even got a Widow Mine there, just taking out single drones. So Ling Run Base keep trying to get in. The Big Daddy Thor standing strong in the mineral line. Clem has remembered plus three vehicle armor as well. He's going to clean up all of those Zerglings. Oh, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. She steals all the tanks and the Cyclone, so she can't get shot down. Oh my god, and they're starting to take, if she, if she can hunt down the Thors as well, that'll be big. There's still a tank on the left side, which is very annoying. She's going to take out that Cyclones as well, but she's got to trap these Thors. Where's the rest of the army? It's over on the right. The Thors are separated. She can hunt these units down. That'll be massive. She catches them. Okay, they're trying to run away. Clem's trying to hide right now, but these roaches are going to see it. She sees where those, those Thors are, and that's such an easy pick off. Or she could go to the right even and jump on them. Oh no, you cannot afford to lose these expensive Thors out here. Thors are very slow. This is their weakness is positionally they can get taken advantage of. Biofungal goes across the front line. A few of her ravages do go down. Clem pulls back from the worst parts of that. That could have been a little bit worse. It was looking so bad. She did lose a base though. So remember, even though she got a good fight, still a little problematic. She will finally take out that siege tank. Not before he gets a few shots off. The unit's confused about where that artillery fire was coming from before they figure it out. Two more barracks on the way. Oh, we're going to see a ghost transition, guys. Now, these ghosts aren't going to have attack and armor upgrades, but that's not what's changed anyway. These are going to be spellcaster ghosts. Snipe no longer one-shots a roach. It does 130 damage, uh, down from 170. But it does do bonus to buy, uh, to psionic, so it's still one-shots vipers. It's still one-shots vipers, but it's weaker versus the roach and weaker versus ultras, which I don't think she's going to build, even though they are cheaper by 25 minerals now. Oh, no! Scarlet loses a hatchery to Elva Harass on the left side. That's bad for her. This Widow Mine is still up here. She finally deals with it. Luckily, it only killed four drones. Could have been worse. She's got 82 workers right now. Vipers on the way. Double air upgrades. A few more drones going down. Frustrating for Scarlet to deal with, but she finally does. And she's trying to gather up in the middle of the map. She's made more Corruptors. She's got a Viper on the way. Remember that Vipers, also, they're consumed no longer does quite as much damage instead of a full consume consuming 200 hit points of a building it now consumes 150 just a small thing to make it so zerg players don't accidentally kill their buildings and have to focus so much on always consuming off separate buildings uh, a very slight buff to the viper in this patch ghosts are now coming out three at a time ravages will still get one shot by uh, emp by the way or snipe i should say EMP has a slightly smaller radius, keep in mind, and Fungal has to be thrown from slightly cl slightly closer. So both of those units... Oh man, she's losing so many Ravages. She's losing so many Ravages. That's so nasty. She's lost 32 this game. Units lost time. Still 6,000 resources, or a bit under that, about 5,000, closer to that for uh, Clem's favor. She's making more Broods, but he's got four Vikings, two Thors, 
and a bunch of ghosts coming out. I mean, if she can fungle the ghosts, two Thors ain't too bad. The thing is, she's only got money for two Broodlords right now, so this is not a Broodlord swap. This is a Broodlord trickle. There we go. Nine Broodlords now morphing, so she morphs in seven more of them. Turret's going to come up here just as these roaches come in. Perfect timing for Clem. Hopefully he notices what's happening and brings some units over there. And he does. Brings the SCVs away. Very well done by him. Those ghosts. Let's see. I want to see snipe on the roaches. Please, please, please. Guys, snipe, snipe, snipe. 130 damage now. Come on. Just, just so we can see the visual difference of seeing those roaches survive. He's not even... I don't think he bothers. He's just like, whatever. I can aim move my Cyclones into this. I don't care. He actually loses like four or five Cyclones. So good focus fire by Scarlet to take down as many as she could. She didn't really want those roaches wasting her supply any longer. She wants more efficient units. Oh no, the EMPs! He comes forward! Oh my god, she actually avoids some of it and does get a fungal off, but she didn't have an overseer with her army. She needs overseers so badly. She's relying on fungal. He tries to snipe a ravager, but she gets out of range. That's something from last season's patch that uh, allows that snipe to break when your units run far enough away. Cyclones do come forward. That one's going to get transfused. The Cyclones coming in down here on the bottom. Right now, the Queen's trying to top each other up. And it looks like she will hold on there. Ling's are going to catch these Cyclones as well. Bit of an F2 there for Clem. They're all going to go down. Nice engage for Scarlet. Oh, but the Vikings fight the Broodlords again. Remember, those Broodlords are faster to move. They are at 2. Point... Wait, 2.62? Aren't the Broodlords meant to be 2.82 move speed? Did they screw up adding the Broodlord speed in, guys? Or is the tooltip just not updated? These are meant to be up to 2.82 speed, I'm pretty sure, with the same patch that made these Cyclones 110 hit points. I could be wrong on that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. I'm going to check that at the end of this game. We'll show you guys in the video. Am I wrong or is this wrong? We'll, we'll see. We'll find out. Oh, EMP does land on a bunch of those infestors. She's got to be careful. This is going to be the fight to side the game. She's got an overseer this side. The ghosts are getting picked off. They are getting picked off. The tanks are friendly firing. The corruptors taking out the libs. This could be a really good fight for Scarlet. If she could just kill that Thor, she kills it. The liberators go after the broodlords, funnily enough. That's a crazy move. He's going to snipe a few of them. Remember, they still get two shot by snipe as well. Uh, those broodlords do. She's going to attack in the south. Ling Ravager denying his bases. She clears out that expansion and she breaks his army. Luckily, though, he does get away. Those siege tanks just fast enough. Maybe those broodlords could have started stepping forward and taking them out but of course very scary to start to set four wounded broodlords towards the opponent's ghosts that widow mine is waiting for her to get scared left but she goes north and that ravager goes woo i'm going to heaven man and does just spiral up on out of there scarlet's income's not great she lost a lot of bases in these last trades even though the fights were good notice her income's not amazing then again, neither is Clemson. Oh my god, Scarlet, crazy! Oh my god, she's blocking him from repairing! He tries to repair a bit too late. His SCVs can't get surface area. She goes for the Lynx around. Oh my god, there was no building armor! There was no building armor! She goes for the Lynx around and the mass Lynx stops the repair. They get this around and take it out and she gets out. That is huge. She just took out 24 SCVs. She's denying the bases down the bottom as well. This could be a game-winning move right now. Scarlet could be getting a game-winning move. Lynx are going to try to surround the ghost, but oh, they don't have detection. Oh, she's going to lose a lot of Ling Roach in the top. Those Hellions blocking him. It's a bloody flamethrower. Fire, fire toaster right there. Corrupt is going after these command centers, trying to take out this Liberator as well. One command center is burning down on the bottom. We'll keep that selected. You can see it down there in the bottom right. And uh, it will burn down in a moment. She's going to come back. Scarlet's got income. He doesn't. And that command center does burn down. He's going to try to retake these bases, drop mules. He's got 10 Vikings. He's still he's up in army supply. She's got to be careful. This next fight decides the game. She, she doesn't need to take it. He does. Looks like, oh, Parasitic Bomb and Corruptors go forward, but he splits the Viking and lands it immediately. Fungal lands, but a bit late. EMPs landing on the Infestus. She's got to get out of here. She's got to get out of here. Those EMPs are landing. They are slightly smaller EMPs. It does help her out, but she's got to get these Infestus out. They're very clumped. Oh, she lands a big Fungal. If the Corruptors could take out the Vikings, then the Broodlords can maybe deal with everything else, but there is a lot of Thors and Ghosts in the back. She's got to back off. She's got to back off. There's too many Thors. She does start running away. Remember, these Broodlords are meant to be 2.82 move speed. They're only 2.62. They may have bugged that up, may have accidentally implemented that incorrectly ghost does get picked off as well in the most recent changes by the way i did notice that the hydra they fixed a bug apparently the hydra had an armor which it was not meant to have in this patch at all but somehow it got an armor on this patch testing which got fixed after a few days anyways oh no no no, no you gotta get out of that scarlet she's trying to make banelings to deal with the ghosts but she, she doesn't have enough units to deal with these doors these doors are jumping on top she's got to pull back she's got to pull back and take the perfect fight and right now it's just uh, honestly just mass ling Mass Ling with 3-3 will do it. If she can get enough Ling, she's trying to make more Broodlords, but not against Mass Thor. I don't think that's the play. Remember, Hellbats are coming in. Remember, Hellbats no longer one-shot units, guys. They don't one-shot the Zerglings. With plus three, they're only doing 36 damage. A Zergling has 35 hit points, but it's got three armor as well, or only two. 
So it's, it's, they're surviving on one hit point from the Hellbat shot. So Mass Ling, if she can surround when there's not many Hellbats, she'll be able to do it. She's sending a Ling around by around the top. She denies that top base being taken. She's going to deny the mining on this base as well. She's got to be really careful. She gets a Siege Tank. Oh, one or two free Siege Tanks is going to be amazing. She gets two free Siege Tanks. Just remember those Broodlings are so slow and they do less damage now. The Siege Tank friendly fire is probably the biggest part of their damage at this point. The Thors take out this base on the left. Her drones are getting ransacked. Oh no, she's losing this base as well. She's losing all of her economy. Her Lings run into a planetary and do get taken out. She's denying this base on the top. All he's got left is these four mineral patches. Clem's income is absolutely smoked, but so is Scarlet's. She's got two hatcheries in the north. The problem is her drones. She just lost 34. She's got a pack of drones on the left side trying to find a new home. She feels like, oh, I have no economy. You have mules. I have to go. And to be fair, if she could neural those Thors, she could win. Dude, if she neurals these Thors, she wins. If she neurals the Thors, she wins. Oh my God, but the, the, the tanks might see her. The tanks might see her. Okay, oh, the ghosts, the ghosts, the ghosts. Watch out for the ghosts. The ghosts are going after the infestors. That reduced range on the EMP seems to not be impacting as much as Scarlet's reduced range on the fungal. She loses an infestor and a bunch of the energy is gone. I think, yeah, fun, honestly, neural flanking these Thors is, is how you win this game. But he's got seven orbitals. He's got so much scans. She turns to fight. I don't think that's the goal. I think she needed to run away, but this army was kind of hunting her down. So she's got Ling's kind of surrounding on the bottom, but the Infestors are out of energy. And she just doesn't quite have the numbers. That is a very close late game scenario. Holy crud, that was awesome. Okay, guys, so check it out. So the Broodlord initially did get its move speed increased from 2.24 to 2.62. Okay, I thought it was 2.82, but maybe that was a different unit. And if we look down here at the recent change log, I don't think there's been any Broodlord changes. So it looks like I was getting my move speed upgrades confused, guys. Um, I think it was the Overlord, actually. Let's go Overlord. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it was actually the Overlord uh, with Overlord speed upgrade and turned into a Dropper Lord that goes from 2.62 to 2.83. So don't get me wrong, guys. I was confused there. The Broodlord was actually at the correct speed. Oh yeah, and as you guys can see in the latest changelog on the 31st, we also had bug fixes, fix an issue where Hydra's had an additional armor on the test mod. So <laughs> I don't think anyone even realized that at first. So um, damn, man, the, the players that like lost to Lambo and stuff in the uh, Balance Test tournament were like, what, those Hydra's had armor? What the hell, man? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this game. Um, so much fun to keep up with all the balance changes. We didn't get to see everything, but we got to see a lot of ghost interactions, a lot of Broodlord interactions, and a few others. Let me know what you thought. I thought the openings looked really interesting that the Cyclones really forced Scarlet to be more active with Lings and Roaches and Ravages. Her Queens were not that much of an impenetrable wall against the Cyclone. And that's a pretty cool interaction. I like that she's forced to build more units early, but he also seemed to commit uh, quite a lot to force her to stay lower on drones for a while. He delayed his third command center a long time. Obviously, this is just one game. But if the early game looks like that all the time in terms of like Cyclone openings, I'm totally happy with that. And I even think there's an option potentially to do like two factory Cyclone Hellion and then swap into Bio afterwards. I don't know if you're necessarily tied to Mech. I, this was Hastam who initially suggested this idea to me. I feel like there might be a move. At the moment, it's almost always going to Mech. People feel like because they got to get the second factory on the tech lab, get the Cyclone upgrade, they're just like, oh, I might as well go straight Mech. But I do wonder if that's an option. Let me know what you think down below in the comments and stay tuned for a video covering a few of the other biggest balance changes that are upcoming over the next day or two. Thanks for watching everyone. Goodbye and good night.